cross bites. Should you always correct them or should you sometimes try to leave them like they are? And when you decide you want to correct them, how will you do it? What will you use? In what condition? My name is Stefan Reinhardt, Director of Education for the Clear Institute, and today we look at how to deal with cross bites right after this. <music> these videos and you're not subscribed to the channel what are you waiting for and click on the bell so you'll be notified every time we upload a new video and don't forget give us the thumbs up cross bites now what is a cross bite that's the first thing we need to know what is a cross bite well according to the AAO the American Association of Orthodontists a cross bite is a type of malocclusion where the upper teeth fit inside the lower teeth and this can affect a single tooth or a group of teeth it can involve the front teeth the back teeth or a combination of both and you have posterior cross bites and anterior cross bites now we say there's a posterior cross bites when the upper teeth are occluding inside the lower teeth and there's an anterior cross bite when the anterior teeth sit behind the lower teeth because when the teeth are lined up correctly um, I compare this to a lid on the box you know the upper teeth are like a lid on a shoe box and this is how I explain it to the patient so with this image it really helps them understand how teeth should occlude or teeth should close together because sometimes they think that they should close like this and and they say it's only the only when I close my teeth and only the front one touches they don't and they don't touch in the back well this is not a normal occlusion that's impossible we've never seen that only like this it can't be or maybe it can what causes cross bite oh that's a good question there's multiple reasons for having a cross bite it can be genetic it can be a delayed loss of baby teeth uh, it can be abnormal eruption of uh, permanent teeth it can be thumb sucking or abnormal swallowing Teeth can be pushed out of place, a bone can be distorted, or it can have a combination of all those things. Now, does a crossbite need to be fixed, or why does a crossbite need to be fixed? Well, it may depend on the age of your patient. It may depend on the condition of your patient. Now, this is up for you to decide. This is where you're doing your diagnosis, your treatment planning, but there are conditions where you should correct the crossbite and there are other conditions where maybe you would prefer to leave it like it is. But who should decide? You or the patient? No, you are there to provide information. The patient will decide. Now a crossbite may reveal an underlying job problem. And this is best addressed at a young age where we can use appliance and expand and expand and expand while the face and jaws are still developing. Now, if we don't correct crossbite at a young age, we can have a symmetry. We could have the jaw shifting on one side. You can have lopsided jaw growth and some weird wearing out of the teeth. So if you can take the patient, young patient, it's in the, the ideal time to correct the crossbite. But is the crossbite due to tooth position or it's the position of the jaws or again, a combination of both? When will you decide to make a correction or to leave it like it is? Well, let's look at some examples of how I decide to treat my cases. <music> Invisalign you have to fill a prescription and you will have this question in the prescription where they ask if there's a crossbite that is present in the posterior teeth do you want to correct the crossbite 
or do you want to leave it like it is? Now, and this is when you're wondering, should I correct the crossbite? Should I leave it like it is? Should I make a correction? How will I make a correction? How will I do it? Is it even possible? Will I make it worse? And this is what you want to avoid. You don't want to make it worse, and you can. Now, should we always correct crossbite? Does malocclusion have an impact? on oral health. In 2020, there was a big meta-analysis published in the American Journal of Orthodontics and Dental Facial Orthopedics. And, and one, one of the guys I like to refer to, Kevin O'Brien, was part of the ones who published the article. And what the, the, the conclusion was from this meta-analysis is that overall, there is an absence of published evidence regarding the effect of malocclusion on oral health and the impact of orthodontic treatment on oral health. So should we always correct crossbite? I had interesting conversation with prosthodontists who said, well, sometimes it's better to leave it like it is. If you think you're going to finish with an edge to edge bite, eh, maybe it's not a good idea. So how should you evaluate your cases? What should you look for? This is what we're going to do now. Let's look at a case. Let's look at an example. Let's take this case here and we don't have the roots. So let's just draw some roots there. Yeah, looking better like that. Let's just redraw the crown to give us an idea. And let's just remove the clincheck to leave us with these two molars. Now, look at the relation here. You have the palatal side, the buccal side, and the lingual side, the buccals. If you don't know which one is the palatal side, <laughs> maybe you should do some revision of your notes, or maybe I should do some better drawing. But let's say we have aligners coming over these teeth. Now, let's say we want to correct this crossbite. The force would come from the lingual or the, the palatal, and we would push on the teeth like that. And what we expect to see something like this. We look at the clincheck and we go from this to this and we say, yeah, perfect. Voila, that's it. This is what I want to do. Remember one thing. The clincheck is virtual. You are looking at a virtual world when you're looking at the clincheck. This is not what's going to happen in real life. So what's going to happen? Let's go back and just think of what you're doing. You're applying a force on an object, the, the tooth. And this object has roots. And these roots are inside the bone. And every object, every object, when you look at mechanics, when you look at uh, biomechanics, all the objects, all the teeth, any object you have in life, anything that's around you, yourself, we have or there is a center of resistance. And this center of resistance is a point in an object where if you apply a force directly in line with it, you're going to create a translation. Now, here we cannot put a force directly to through this, this point because this point is about, maybe it's not exactly there, but would be about where the furcation is. And it's impossible to apply a force there. So the only place we can apply a force is on the crown of the tooth. Now, one of the advantage uh, of the uh, clear aligners is that we have the whole surface. We can apply a force on the buckle, we can apply a force on the lingual, we can apply a force on the occlusal, all the surface of the, the, the tooth or the teeth where we have access, everywhere we have access, we can apply a force. Now, if we want to push the tooth away, if we want to do a correction of this crossbite, of course, we're going to push from the, the palatal or the lingual. What will happen if there is a force that is not applied in line with the center of resistance? Now, we're going to create something. We're going to create a tendency for the, the tooth to rotate. We call this this moment of force. We're going to create a moment. Now, the moment is the tendency for the object to rotate, and it will rotate around the center of resistance. And I'm sure that if you've done some Invisalign cases and you did some 
expansion because for me it's not really expansion but if you did expansion you probably a lot of times ended up with some maybe posterior open bites or only the palatal cusp that were touching an occlusion but all the open uh, cusp were I mean it was open the bite was open there uh, you had an angulation of the upper molars like this something you don't want to see why because of this here this is exactly what happens you saw the movement because of the force we're applying because it's rotating again we're creating this moment we end up with something like this now if we would try to correct a crossbite like this like with this kind of mechanics we would end up with an edge to edge bite which for me is worse than staying with the initial crossbite like this so what are we what should we look for how should we what, what would be the best uh, position of the teeth where we would want you know to 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 correct the crossbite and would have a good result now if we just could apply the force directly in line with the center of resistance we then would have a movement like this we would call this pure pure translation which means that all the points of an object will move in the same direction at the same time pure translation this is pure translation now to to have this you need the force to go right through the center of resistance which again is impossible for us so let's take these three scenarios here number one number two and number three Oh my God. again would you just push a little bit thank you so we have these three situations now we have number one number two and number three now where are the center of resistance let's just assume they are positioned like this those are the center of resistance now you would cover these teeth with aligners and you would probably apply a force to correct the crossbite which would come from the palatal side on the upper molar and the buccal side on the lower molar so let's take the first position and let's replace these arrows by by thumb you know i like i like the trick that was given uh, to me by jerry sampson dr jerry sampson my mentor the one i learned mechanics with the one who made me understand what mechanics is now i was saying all the time just imagine that the teeth are in soft wax and that you would use your thumb to apply a force where would you apply the force to create the movement you want to create now this is so useful with clear aligners when you think of clear aligners when you think of attachments it really helps me all the time uh, deciding how i will put my attachments what type of attachments i will use how i will orient the attachments so now here let's just replace these blue arrows by thumbs and just pretend we're applying a force with our thumb and the teeth what do you think is going to happen on the first the first scenario first position now if we apply the force we would see something again like this we would create in my opinion something even worse we would finish end to end now let's take the second position now look at the teeth look at the in the initial position of the teeth the upper molar is already oriented like this with this kind of torque inclination that we don't really want or or, or like now imagine we're again changing the arrows for these thumb and we're applying a pressure of force to try to correct this crossbite what will happen well, again something even worse now think the third third scenario third possibility and look at the angulation of the teeth the initial angulation and think again of the thumb your thumb taking your thumb applying a pressure what will happen there what will you see now this is the perfect condition this is where you should correct the crossbites 
when you have the upper teeth going inside with this angulation coming inside and the lower teeth maybe a little bit outside and you just push them and you just create this nice movement nice i would say almost natural movement you create with clear aligners and this would correct your crossbite this is i mean when you look where we started and where we ended the blue positions where we started you see that really the best position to start with when you're trying to correct a crossbite it's the number three this is what you want to look for when you see a crossbite this is exact this yeah this is exactly I mean look wait wait the upper teeth are have the, the thumb down they should be happy let's make them happy yeah did you learn something well you know now what to look for when you're trying to correct crossbites with clear aligners because again you will not do expansion you will not open the suture with clear aligners we are not there yet will we be someday maybe who knows huh you better stay tuned so in my hands when i have a growing kid i have a child I, I try to make these corrections as fast as possible when i see a crossbite when i see that i can make expansion i will make the expansion first and we can continue after with invisalign but when i have adults who don't necessarily want to go through surgery for correcting their crossbites I will really evaluate if it's better to leave it like it is or if we can because of the position of the teeth if we can predictably correct the crossbite really hope this will help you deciding what you're going to do with crossbite in your cases and treatment planning your cases i'm stefan reinhardt director of education for the clear institute where dentists make the move now, if you like these videos, do like more than a thousand of your peers and colleagues and subscribe to this channel. We have at least a new video every week and we have a lot of interesting online education coming soon on our e-learning platform. So stay tuned and have fun correcting crossbites or not.